teach a young child about giving and tithing and saving and working, it can be just like that conversation there. So I see we have lots of kids here today, and we also have lots of grandparents here today. If you have not yet started to teach your child about gaining all they can, saving all they can, and giving all they can, it's not that you're too late, but boy, you are way behind, okay? So um, they're not going to learn this anywhere else in life except from parents, grandparents, great-grandparents. It is your job. It is what God calls you to do. Teach the children. Teach the children. They need to know because they have big questions like we just saw. They have big questions. Don't be afraid of your kids, all right? So, um, last night something happened at worship, and it was startling, and I can't see Daryl, so there we go. Now I can see Daryl, so, all right. Um, and, uh, but I have to give you the context for what happened last night, because it's connected to what happened two weeks ago at worship. So, uh, we have our acolytes. The acolytes are the ones who light candles. We have those on Saturday night, too. Uh, the difference is that we keep the candle lighters locked in the closet. Now, some of you are like, oh, my word, you locked the little kids in the closet? No. The candle lighter is the little tool that they use, okay? So, it's locked in the closet down here. And so, uh, the, the acolyte, uh, the one who lights the candles, has to come and ask, either Mike or myself, for a key to the closet. So, two weeks ago, Saturday night, our acolyte comes up to me and with a rather serious and stern voice says, give me the key. <laughs> that didn't set well with me, but his mama was standing right there. It really did not set well with mama. So, um, I think there must have been maybe a conversation that occurred during the course of the week. Maybe he was just having a bad day a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, I don't know what it was. But last night, he came up to me before worship, same boy, and he says, Pastor Doug, would you please give me a key to the closet? I thought, oh, whoa! Whoa! There are miracles. You know, there are miracles. So parenting works and God works too, okay? So my point is this, that, that it seems like a lot of the simple courtesies are slipping away. Seems like they're just slipping away at, at, at home and at school, at businesses, and, and even in churches. They just seem to be slipping away. We don't say words like please and thank you near as often and 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 we don't take off our hats indoors or open the doors near as quickly as we did at one time and we don't tip the hat or say hello to a stranger we meet near as much as we used to it concerns me a little bit a couple of weeks ago i ate at a chick-fil-a restaurant cindy and i ordered and then we went and found a table when the server came, he very respectfully set the, the food down on our table. He lifted off the sanitized table tag that was there, and then he asked if we needed anything else. And we said, no, we don't, but thank you for asking. He did two things next, which were remarkable. He looked us in the eye. He looked us in the eye and said, it is my pleasure. Chick-fil-A has made a corporate level decision to teach teenagers how to say please, thank you, and it is my pleasure. And the reason I know that it's a corporate level decision is because any Chick-fil-A you go to in the country the teenagers are saying please and thank you and it is my pleasure. You know, sometimes it's just the little things that make so much difference in our world. The little things in life. The little things in life often matter the most. A little courtesy, please. So let's go to our text. 
Jesus tells the story of a man who is managing a business for another person. And as the story unfolds, Jesus lets us know that the manager um, has made some pretty big mistakes. He's been dishonest. Um, he's been destructive. He's been devious. And he is caught. I want to say this to everybody who is here, but especially the young people who are here today. If you do things that you're not supposed to do, you will get caught eventually. And then there's this thing called consequences. Some of us adults are still learning that, but we hang in there. This guy gets caught. He gets caught by the owner of the business, and, and, and he, he's wrong, you know, and he has wronged other people. So he tries to set things right the best he can, and what he does is he goes to every person who owes money to the owner of the business, and he reduces their debt. He reduces their debt, you know, does his best to kind of set things straight. In Luke 16, verse 10, Jesus says this, anyone who can be trusted in little matters can also be trusted in important matters. But anyone who is dishonest in little matters will be dishonest in important matters. Jesus is saying the little things matter in life. They matter at school. They matter on the team. It matters out there in the field when you're doing harvest. It matters in the church. It matters at home. The little things matter. If you're not honest in the little things you're not going to be honest when the big things come along your way. Time to start is with the little things. And Jesus here is talking about money. Okay, he's talking about money. So when it comes to money, Jesus says honesty with the Lord God, honesty with other people, and honesty with yourself makes a difference in our world. The little things in life often matter the most. A little honesty please. I'm going to go back to the 1700s. John Wesley was a pastor. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit to lead a spiritual revival in England during that time. And, and beyond his wildest imagination, the Methodist movement grew extraordinarily fast. And Wesley had to figure out how to manage all of this and all of these new Christians and all of that. So what he did was he developed a, a small group kind of system where people could continue to grow in their relationship with Jesus. Now, Wesley understood some things. He understood that every Christ follower needs at least two things. One of those is encouragement, and the other one is accountability, if you don't have both, it's kind of not balanced in there and it doesn't work very well. So that's why he developed these small groups is it so these new Christ followers could find the encouragement they needed as well as the accountability they needed. The Methodist small groups were originally launched not to teach people about Jesus but to hold people accountable to give their offering to mission. That's what it was for. Later it developed into uh, the primary discipling center for the Methodist movement. But, but Wesley understood in the 1700s that our giving is a spiritual discipline that impacts and can grow our relationship with Christ. He also understood something else that was very important. And that is that Christ followers are not excused. They're not excused from the great commandment to love God and love other people. Wesley believed. Wesley believed that no one can love God or other people and fail to give. You can't do it. You can't do it. So we provided this system of accountability for giving our offering, but also for growing in God's grace. The little things matter. The little things matter in life. A little accountability, please. Now, John Wesley was a very pragmatic um, pastor, and so he understood that, that giving to God would be an ongoing challenge. 
And he's right. It's still an ongoing challenge for Christ followers today. So he provided three rules to help people manage their personal finances. One of those, gain all you can. Another one, save all you can. And the third one, give all you can. Now, following these three rules of managing your personal finances is going to require that you have a growing faith in the Lord. It's going to require that you have a growing faith in the Lord God. This is especially true of the third rule, which is give all you can. And this is why, because giving all you can is difficult. It's difficult because it requires, it requires faith in God's ability, God's ability to provide. And how many Christian people today don't believe that God has the ability? It's not whether he will or not, it's whether God is able or not to provide for us in our world. That's why giving all we can is difficult. It requires faith in God's ability to provide what we need. Now, let me kind of flesh that out a little bit. It's easy to say, I trust the Lord with all of my heart and soul and mind. My whole life is his. But we're kind of defining that sometimes. My whole life, my marriage, my parenting, my job, my class, my team. But then over here, we have another area. And it's our money. I trust Jesus with all of my life. Meaning all of this, but not meaning this. It's sometimes tough to really have faith that God is able to provide not only for all of these good things, but also for these good gifts over here. God wants all of us. God wants all of me. All of me, not just parts of me. Jesus says it this way in, in the story. Luke 16, verse 13. Uh, you cannot serve God and money. You, you can't have some things over here and some things over here. It all belongs to God. The little things in life often matter the most. A little faith, please. They never had much when it comes to things, but they had a deep, deep love for one another, and they had this kind of growing faith in the Lord. I imagine that they chose a simpler lifestyle so that they could give a tithe of 10% of their income to the Lord. I imagine that along the way in life, they discovered that givingness is holiness. And then the unspeakable happens her husband died. At first, she, she made things work. But more quickly than she could ever have imagined, she found herself trading her belongings for groceries so there was something to eat. With so few things remaining, she continued to trust the Lord God would provide for her. One day, she went to the place of worship. She went to the place of worship for the same reason that you go to the place of worship. That's to pray and to offer praise to the Lord. And she went also to give her tithe. When she got to the place of worship, she walked slowly down the aisle. She walked prayerfully down the aisle to the front of the church. That's how you gave your tithes and offerings in those days. You walked up to the front, and in the front there was what was called an offering box, and she dropped in her offering. There's a couple things you need to know about her offering. It was two pennies. Two pennies. And it was everything, literally everything that she had to her name. She dropped it in the offering box and then she walked back and took a seat and she prayed. I'm convinced that she had faith in the Lord God. 
I'm convinced that she believed God had the ability, the ability to provide for her needs. Now, sitting in the crowd that day was Jesus. Jesus kind of watches what goes on during worship. And he noticed what this woman had done, and he makes a comment because he watched what other people were doing as well. So let me read to you Luke chapter 21, verses 3 and 4. There Jesus says, I tell you this, that this poor woman has put in more than all the others. Let me stop right there. Because if, if you think about that in a very literal way, you're going to miss the point. If you're just looking at the value of the money she put in the box, it was not more than everyone else gave. But if you look at it as proportion of her income, it was far more. Let me read it again. I tell you that this poor woman has put in more than all the others. Everyone else gave what they didn't need, but she is very poor, and she gave everything, everything that she had. All the others were bringing a tithe of 10% of their income because that was the expectation of worship in those days. You bring a tithe of 10% of your income. So all the others are bringing 10%. They're bringing the tithe. But when she comes, she doesn't give 10%. She gives 100%. That's what Jesus is pointing out. The tithe of 10% in Jesus' mind is considered the beginning point. The beginning point. Tithing makes a difference in the world. The little things in life often matter the most. A little tithing, please. Now, Jesus wraps up the story about this dishonest manager by speaking about the role of faith in giving all we can. Luke 16, verse 10, Jesus says, Whoever is faithful in very little is faithful also in much. Hear the word of God here. No matter how much or how little you have, you can still choose to place your faith in Jesus. No matter how much or how little you have today, you can choose to place your faith in Jesus. You can choose, choose to trust Jesus as your Savior and ask him to be Lord of your life, your whole life. And you can do that today and you can experience God's grace and mercy and the love of Jesus in ways that you can't imagine. So if you've never invited him to be your savior and be Lord of your whole life, today is the day to invite him in. You can choose, choose to trust Jesus as the Lord over your finances. You've asked him to be Lord over your marriage and your kids and your job and so many other things. Why not ask him to be Lord, to be God over your finances too? And you can choose today. You can choose to tithe 10% of your income. Some of you have made some other choices up to this point, so maybe your commitment today is to commit to Jesus to move towards the tithe, towards the tithe. The little things in life often matter the most. That's what Jesus was saying about this dishonest manager. The little things in life often matter the most. We titled this series the last three weeks, More Power. And I know, because I pray for it, I pray for more of the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. I pray for more of the power of Jesus' love in my life. I pray for more of God's word and that power to be in my life. And I know that you are praying the same kind of prayers for more of the power of the Spirit in your life. I know you are. And sometimes it doesn't come. And it's not because you're not praying enough. It's not because you're not, not worshiping enough. It's not because you're not serving the poor enough. It's not because you're not in your small group enough. It's not because of those reasons. Sometimes it comes down to this. The little things often matter the most. 
sometimes God may just be wondering if you're really going to trust him with all of your life. Including your tithe. Maybe that's when the full power of the kingdom will flood your life, your heart, your mind, your soul, everything that you're doing. Little things in life often matter the most. A little power, please. Let's pray. Jesus, we hear your word today that the little things often matter the most. A little more courtesy, a little more faith, a little more accountability, a little more power, a little more tithing. Yeah, Jesus, we want all those things. We want all those things because we want to live and love like you, Jesus. We want to experience the abundant life that you've promised to us. Not just eternal life in heaven. We want to experience the abundance of life right now, right now today. So Jesus, help us to be faithful in the little things. Like courtesy and honesty and accountability. Like faith. And like tithing, help us to be faithful in the little things so that when you're ready and you believe we're ready, you'll provide those great big opportunities too. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing our prayer. Thank you for leading us and guiding us closer to your heart. Thank you for your amazing grace and your tender mercies. Thank you, Jesus. for reminding us it's not how much in dollars, it's how much of our heart. And so, Jesus, we commit with your help to gain all we can, save all we can, and give all we can to your glory, to your glory, Jesus. Amen.